Hey, welcome back. We're back at it again. So now that you should have a, a pretty good grasp on what an expression means and what an equation means, we're going to start talking about how to solve equations, but not just using our heads, which is fine. It's fine for, for a lot of them. That's okay. Um, but we're going to get to some equations that we just can't do in our heads. It's too difficult. Or maybe you can do it. It's just not, well, not efficient. No, we're wasting, wasting our time just thinking too hard about it. So we're going to start finding out what it means to solve equations using some techniques. Um, so the first, first one we're going to deal with is how to conquer solving equations with just addition and subtraction. So how to do that. So here's your main goal. Your main goal in any equation ever is to isolate the variable. Now, now what that means, what isolate means is just get it by itself by itself on one side. Remember we talked about equations having two sides. That equal sign tells you what the sides are. Having the variable on one side, no other variables around, no other numbers around on that side, an equal sign and a number. So what you're looking for, when you know when you're done, is this. You got variable, equal sign, number, or number, equal sign, variable. It doesn't matter what side that variable is on. doesn't matter as long as it's isolated all by itself. That's our goal. That, that, that sounds pretty easy, uh, but it's, it's not. It's not that easy for a lot of people. They don't know the good steps to take. So we're going to start with that. Now, here's something good. This is awesome. You can do, did you know that? That you can do almost anything you want to an equation, do anything you want, as long as you do to both sides. It's very much, as I mentioned in the last video, it's very much like a teeter-totter. Um, if, you're, if you're on the, they don't have teeter-totters anymore. I wish they did. Those things were fun. I was the fat kid as, when I was younger, so I would just bounce kids right off of there. It was super fun for me. I never got bounced because um, I, was, I was a fat kid. But anyway, so imagine a teeter-totter, right? You're, you're sitting there. You have three kids on one side. You got that three kids on the other side. If you're equally balanced, that makes it fun, so you can go back and forth, okay? If you're equally balanced or you're sitting there, if one kid gets off of one side, that teeter-totter is not going to be balanced anymore unless you take one kid off the other side, and it's going to rebalance. You definitely wouldn't take one kid off one side and put him on the other side. You wouldn't subtract a kid from one side and add that kid on the other side. That's kind of a double wrong, isn't it? You're taking one thing away and adding it over here. That doesn't make sense. That's going to be double unbalanced. That's the idea of an equation. You can do whatever you want. It's a teeter-totter as long as you do both sides. You want to add 10 kids here? Cool. Add 10 kids over here too. You want to subtract them? Fine. Just keep making it equal. Make it even on both sides. That's our goal. Our goal is to isolate the variable by doing whatever we want as long as we're doing it to both sides of the equation. As I told you before, it's the equal sign. The equal sign is what tells you the sides. Um, how we do it is by undoing the given operation. So let's take a look at a couple. It's going to be a quicker video here. Uh, that's the, the basic idea. Now it's, it's time for us to practice it. So let's get ready. Okay, you should know this. Do you think that's an expression or an equation? Well, the big deal here was, do you have an equal sign or do you not? Expressions don't have them. Equations do have them. So, expression, equation, you should have an answer in your head right now. Right now, we have an expression. Could you solve it? What do you think? Could you solve it? Solving is very specific. Solving, solving it means you're giving... There's a little power one there. You'd be giving one number that would create a true statement here. So, you'd say, oh, the answer is blah. Well, we can't do that. We have nothing to test it against, nothing to test the truth, nothing to say whether we're balanced or not. This would be like a one-sided teeter-totter. That's a horrible teeter-totter. But if there's no other side, how can you ever be balanced? That doesn't make any sense. So an expression is like a one-sided teeter-totter. It's, not, it's, not, it's never balanced. It's never anything you plug in to make it balanced. That's what we have here. So we got ourselves an expression. As soon as we do that, yeah, that equal sign means that we're going to have an equation and we'll be able to solve it. Give, in this case, one solution that makes a true statement. Yeah, let's start with that. So y plus 4 equals 10. We've got our variable y. Now, you know what? I, I, I teach this class a lot. Uh, I've seen a lot of students go through this. And when I ask, is the variable isolated, there's always a... Um, just some, some students don't get it, and that's okay. Uh, but let me make it real clear here for you right now. What isolated means is we want this. We want y to be 
all by itself. No addition buddies, no subtraction buddies, no multiplication buddies, no division, nothing else around it. No numbers, no other variables, nothing to be added, subtracted, whatever. Just y by itself on one side. Remember, that's like our teeter-totter. That equal sign makes a side on one side of an equation. This is our goal. So when I ask right now, hey, is that variable isolated? Well, you, do you have an answer? Do you, have you thought about it? Is it by itself? Uh, doesn't look like it's by itself. We've got a plus four right there. So since that equal sign still tells us our two sides, and I know this one's probably easy for you, like, dude, it's six, hello. I get it, I know, I know. Um, but we're gonna get, so hopefully it's six. Oh yeah, all right. Uh, we're gonna get some ones that we can't just look at and do. That's why we're gonna develop some good steps now, even though that might be boring. Like, dude, I can do this. I get it, that's okay. Uh, but later on, we won't be able to. So here's our big ideas. We have an equation here, it's got two sides to it, given to us by our equal sign. We want to get that variable by itself. Our goal is to do that by doing anything we want to, but we're also gonna have to undo the given operation. So we can do anything we want. Let's choose to undo the things that are around our y, the operations around our variable. Well, what would that be? You know what? I don't even care about this side right now. I'm, all I'm looking for is this. Our variable side drives our equation. It tells us what to do. It says, hey, get me by itself. Right now, I'm being added by 4. I don't want to be added by 4. I want to be by myself. How would you undo adding by 4? Well, that word that you're probably searching for right now is called an inverse. The opposite of, of something mathematically is it's, it's, it's inverse. It would undo, well, the thing that would undo another operation or even a function later on is called its inverse. So we're looking for something that's the inverse of plus four. Well, think about what, what the inverse of plus four would be. Um, would it be divide by four? What do you think? How about multiply by four? No, it doesn't make sense. If you're gonna, if, if you had a teeter-totter, one person, this person, and you added four to it and you wanna undo that, well, that's going to be a subtraction concept. So what we need to get in our head right now is that subtraction and addition, those are called inverse operations. They undo each other. We can always use them against one another. That's kind of cool. So when we see addition next to a variable, we're probably going to be subtracting at some point. Um, if we see subtraction next to a variable and we want to get that variable by itself, we're probably going to be adding. We're going to be doing the inverse operation to undo, well, whatever's around our variable, to start undoing the given operation. Now, here's the big thing. I know you can do it in your head. The guess and check our way is great sometimes, but in the, for the, the, um, the purpose of learning our steps, we're gonna be showing our work. I typically use a different color. I'll use uh, black and purple since they have good contrast against the whiteboard. You guys can actually see them. I don't know if you can see the purple that well, but I'm always gonna be showing my work up here. So I have y plus four equals 10. I've identified my equation. I've identified my variable that I want to get by itself. And now I'm just going to start undoing everything around that variable with the opposite or the inverse operation. But here's the big idea. If I do the opposite of plus 4, the inverse of plus 4, which is just minus 4, the whole big deal is this. You have to do it to both sides. Think teeter-totter again. If you have a balanced teeter-totter and you take four kids off of one side, you're going to also have to take four kids off the other side. You can't take four off here and leave it the same. You can't take four off here and add four over here to balance it out somehow. That makes it double unbalanced. So if we're going to subtract four here, we're going to subtract four there as well. That's the idea. Do whatever you want. As long as you are following the undo the operation that I've given you and the you got to do it to both sides. Now check it out. What's plus four minus four? Dude, that's zero. Yeah, that's exactly right. With addition and, listen, listen, get this in your head. Okay, don't miss this. With addition, subtraction, we're trying to get zeros. Why? Think about that. If, if you, I, I want you to stop when I ask those questions. I'm not being rhetorical here. I'm not asking this for my benefit. But why would we be trying to get zeros for addition, subtraction? What happens when you add zero to a variable? Does it do anything to that variable? Or, or to a number even. Take five plus zero, does it change five? Take five minus zero, does it change the five? That's why we're trying to get zeros here. Because if I can get 
y plus zero, y plus zero is still y. It's it's the the additive identity. I mean, you're adding something that's giving you back what you start, what you what you really want in this case. So when we take plus four minus four and get zero, that's awesome for addition subtraction. Now I'm going to ask you a different question. I want you to be thinking on before the next video. Are we going to want to get zeros with multiplication and division? If you multiply by zero, does it change the number? If you divide by zero. What number are we going to try to get for multiplication and division? Think about that before you watch the next video. With addition and subtraction, we're trying to get zeros, man, because we know if we add zero to a variable, we're still going to get the variable. If we subtract zero from the variable, we're still going to get the variable. So we have y plus 4 minus 4. That's just y. We've taken away the plus 4. On the right-hand side, man, you get your calculator. You know addition rule. What's nice about using addition and subtraction is the addition rule always works. So you have different signs. You subtract, that's 6. You keep the sign of the bigger number, not at the, at, well, absolute value bigger y's. Okay, so uh, keep the sign of the positive 10 here. We would get y equals 6. Now, here's what's great. You can always check your work with equations. Don't go any further until you check your work, at least in your head. So what I mean by check your work is evaluate that equation with that number in it. Replace your y with 6. Is 6 plus 4 the same as 10? Is this side equal to this side? If the answer is yes, you're done, man. There's no way you can get that wrong. If the answer is no, well, I'll check your work. You probably made a little mistake. Watch out for this. Uh, rookies, first-timers who, who are in this, uh, this level oftentimes will go, don't you have to undo that? You, you are. You are because you're on different sides. Adding 4 to both sides and subtracting 4 from both sides is keeping things equal. Now let's step it up to some maybe some things that we, we can't quite do in our head or, or things that are getting along those lines. Let's do a next one. How about um, how about that? First question, of course, I'm going to have you think about. Expression, equation, you think it's, uh, well, it's got to be an equation. It's got an equal sign right there. What that means You've got two sides. I want you to look at it. Hopefully you've written this down and you're doing the notes at home. You should be doing that, okay? Don't just let this wash over you. Much better if you're following along with notes. That way you can look back at it. Try to work on your own as I'm working through it. I promise you that's one more learning modality. You're hitting kinesthetic. You're hitting visual. You're, you're actually doing something with it. Try that. So locate where your variable is. Is the variable on the left side or the right side? It doesn't matter, but you have to be able to find it. So right now our variable is uh, that's 7, that's z, that, oh, here, that's our z. Z is our variable. Is z isolated? Is it all by itself? Nothing around it being added, subtracted, multiplied, divided. Well, what I'm looking for in this case, I want my problem to end this way. I want my problem to end with equals z. I don't care what side the variable's on, left side, right side, I don't care. What I care about is that it's by itself. Y is by itself here, it wasn't here. Z is by itself here. Man, it's not. It's not there. So let's think about what we have to do to get rid of what's around Z. Read it to yourself. Don't even look over it. I don't even care. Just look at the side of the equation where your variable is. What do you have to do to get rid of Z plus 12? Get rid of the, the plus 12. Okay, so I'm thinking, and I'm modeling my thinking here for you. If I get my variable, my variable is being added, well, 12 is being added to my variable. I want to be undoing plus 12. Well, what's the opposite of plus? Well, it's not multiplication, it's not division, it's subtraction. I'm going to subtract 12. And immediately in my head, right now, as soon as I say I'm going to subtract 12, well, I think as soon as I do it to one side, for goodness sakes, you've got to do it to both sides. So let's subtract 12 from both sides. Hey, does it work over here? Z plus 12 minus 12. What's 12 minus, what's plus 12 minus, you're undoing that plus 12 minus 12. You're going to get z plus 0. We just talked about it. z plus 0 is still z. That's awesome. We've just isolated our variable. Some people like to cross this out. It's fine. I don't, it doesn't really matter. I like to show my line because when I have this line that says what you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. There's nothing wrong with showing work like that. Okay. So I have z plus 12. Let's get rid of the plus 12. What's the inverse? Minus 12. Let's minus 12 from both sides. Right side, we get just z. That's great. That's isolated. That's exactly what I want. Left side, hey, what? Oh, man, 7 minus 12. 7 minus 12. Addition rule still works. 
Use your calculator if you want to. Just make sure you're plugging the numbers in correctly. 7 minus 12, you're going to get a negative number here. Different signs, you'd subtract, that's 5, but you're going to keep the sign of the bigger number. Absolute value wise, bigger number. 12 is the bigger number here. So we get negative, subtract 5, negative 5. It's an awful 5. Sorry about my awful 5, but you can still check it. Let's plug this in. Negative 5 plus 12 is 7. On this side, 7. On this side, 7. I know that we're right. That's the way we're doing additions. Yeah, well, solving equations with addition subtraction. Um, what I'd like to do right now, I'd like to see if we can do two more examples. Um, and then it, I would recommend to you that you turn the video off for a second. Uh, and then you go back through these without the notes next to you and see if you can do the these two examples and then the next two I'm going to give you. They're going to get a little bit harder right now. Um, as I mentioned, the, the flow of these videos are, I'm going to give you a really easy one, I'm going to give you a couple medium ones, I'm going to give you a hard one. So, here we go. So the first thing I want in your head, the first thing popping up when you see this on your test or you're on your homework, you go, okay, are we, we're going to classify this. Are we dealing with an expression or are we dealing with an equation? Why? What makes this an, an equation? Why isn't it an expression? Then the next thing that I want you thinking about is, can I solve it? If you don't have an equal sign, the answer is no. You can't solve expressions. Inequalities, those are a little bit different. We'll get to those. But without an equal sign, you're done. You cannot solve it. So can we solve that thing? Well, it's got an equal sign. I mean, it's got to be an equation. We can solve equations. So yeah, we can solve this equation. The first thing I want you to do, do this on your paper at home. Draw a line right there. Make sure you know what gives you the sides to an equation. It's not the... Not the math symbols like pluses and minuses, not the operation symbols. It's the equals. The equal sign is the only thing that gives you two sides here. Now, on your own right now, just put your pencil on the variable. What's the variable up here? Okay, you got the x. What side is it on? Is it on the left side or the right side? Now, on this case, we've got right there. X is on the left-hand side. I want you to look at, at what is happening to the X. What's around the X? Is it isolated? If it is, you're done. If it's not, well, we're going to have to look at undoing what's around that X. I didn't care about the side. It doesn't, doesn't even matter. Don't worry about it right now. What we do here is going to take place over here, but it's the variable side, the variable side, the variable side, the variable side that drives what you're doing. The other side just plays along. Yeah, you're going to work with it, but it's just going to play along. It's kind of like... Um, this assignment says, this guy tells this guy what to do, what, what that side to do. So, oh man, how am I going to get rid of that? How would you undo negative 7 plus x? This is different because these are out of order. Does it matter? Not really. I'm going to show you two different ways to think about this. The first way, the, the easiest way is to think about it. Hey, uh, what's the opposite of negative 7? That's not a minus anymore, okay? Pre-algebra would tell us this that when we have a, that sign, that minus or negative sign in front of everything, that's a negative. When it's between two terms, that's when it's a minus. So right now we have negative 7 plus x. How would you get rid of negative 7? When it's connected with a plus. Not connected with a multiplication, when it's connected with a plus. Well, I know that the opposite, literally the opposite of negative 7 is positive 7. Could we add 7? Let's think about it. Is negative 7 plus 7 equal to 0? We're always trying to get zeros with addition, subtraction, in solving equations. We're always trying to get zeros with this. So does that make a 0? Yeah. Awesome. Is 0? This is 0. Is 0 plus x equal to x? Yeah. This would be 0 plus x. That's still going to be x. That's awesome. That's great. On the right-hand side, we've got addition rule. we get got your calculator, whatever you want to use. Different signs subtract. Sign of the bigger number, you're going to get positive 3. Could we check our work? If we plug this in, always through the original, guys. Always the original. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. I know that we're money. Okay, that's awesome. It's great. Is there a different way? Because where a lot of people get confused here is, well, I thought you spent all this time telling me that plus you use minus and plus you use minus. Plus, why am I not using minus? You can't. 
This is going to be a little weird, but check this out. We still have an equation. We still have two sides. Our variable still x is still on the left-hand side. We still have a negative 7 plus x. What if you thought, well, wait a second, Leonard, versus Professor Leonard. Uh, I'm just joking. But what if I, I did minus? Well, what would you be subtracting? Subtraction is the opposite of addition, so okay. What if we did minus whatever's there? What if we subtract negative 7? This goes back a bit. Let's dig back on this. If you subtract a negative, that, that's like taking away someone's debt, if you want to think about it that way. If you owed money, let's see. You owed money, and I took that money away, or took that debt away. So you owed $8.00 and I subtract your debt. I pay your debt for you. I remove your debt. I'm giving you money. That's a bonus to you. That's adding to you. That's what subtracting negative is. So uh, we can take a little sidetrack here if you want to. You have $3, you spend seven. You spend money you don't have. It's called a credit card. That sucks. Now you're gonna be in the whole $4. You had three. You spent seven. That doesn't make sense that you'd still have four. You didn't even have four to start with. You can't get money by spending money. <laughs> Trust me. Um, but if you had three and you spent seven, you're going to owe four bucks. That's that's what happens in real life. It's called credit card. Let's say that. Um, let's say that something else happens. Let's say that you have three dollars and you owe $7 already. So you have three, you owe seven. And I come along and say, I'm such a nice guy. I'm gonna subtract that debt from you. I'm gonna, you have three bucks and I know it, and you owe seven, that's more than you have. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take away your debt, I'm just gonna pay it. Subtracting someone's debt is giving them money. Um, subtracting a negative is addition. So when we go through and go, well, wait, if the, op the opposite of addition subtraction, I'm going to subtract the number that's being added to x. Same thing here. We subtracted 4. We subtracted 12. Uh, we are going to be subtracting negative 7. If I subtract a negative number, it's really adding. It's the same thing. Whether you're going to add or whether you're going to subtract a negative, you're still adding. Either way. And we can do that here, too. Now, most people are going to choose that way because it's much more concise, isn't it? So instead of dealing with all this minus and negative junk that we have, we go, well, that doesn't look too good. I like that better. Negative 7 plus 7, you get 0. Negative 7 minus negative 7. Negative 7, where I take away the debt of negative 7. That's hard to think about. That's still 0. This side, negative 4. You owe $4. I take away a debt of $7. Well, it's kind of like I'm giving you three bucks. Uh, you'd have, at the end of the day, you'd have three dollars. It's going to be exactly the same. Whichever way you choose, that's fine. Before our last example, I do want to mention, though, that with this way, with, with your, your adding, subtracting, please put the operation you're doing. Do not just put seven. I swear, do not do that. Because what happens here is that a lot of people get this negative seven plus x, confused with negative 7 times x, and those are completely different problems. We're going to get that in the next lesson, but show the operation that you're actually doing. Whether you're adding, whether you're subtracting, I don't care, but show the operation. That way, you firstly, you can follow your work, but most importantly, you won't get confused with the multiplication division. Does that make sense to you guys? Uh, if, if it does, awesome. If not, think about that one more time. What I don't want you to do is get this problem confused with that problem. Those are completely different problems. One's connected by addition, so we're doing the opposite of that negative. Sure, that's okay. All right, We've just learned that adding is the same thing as subtracting a negative. That's okay. But I don't want you to get confused here and start adding 7 here. That's a bad deal because this is not connected through addition or subtraction. So we're going to identify what we're connected with and use the opposite or use something that's equivalent to the opposite. It's a big time problem. A lot of mistakes happen on that problem. Look through this a couple times. Try it on your own a couple times before you move on. Now, our last one.
You know I was going to do it to you. You know you, know you got to have fractions. No, no fractions. It's not even Friday. Well, maybe it's Friday. It's Friday for me. So we got, well, what is it? Equation, expression, uh, equation. It gives us two sides. Where's your variable at? If we got a variable on the right-hand side, this z, we can do whatever we want as long as we do it to both sides. Now listen, you're dealing with fractions. First thing, yeah, fractions suck. They're more work. They're, they're, they're not super funzy, all right? They're not fun time fractions. That's, that's okay. You can be good at something without having to like it. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of things I'm good at that I don't like doing. I, I hate doing dishes, but I'm good at it because I don't want to eat off dirty dishes. You can deal with fractions. Don't let them intimidate you. That's the big thing. You can totally do this. Get some confidence in that. Got a calculator, for goodness sakes, most of you, so use your calculator. That's okay. Deal with an equation with fractions very similar that you would deal with any other equation. Now, I am going to give you some special ways to deal with this in the next lesson. It's kind of cool. But for right now, it's an equation. We have two sides. Our pencil, if we put our pencil on our variable, it's right there. Is there something next to our variable that we need to get rid of? Is it just z? If it is, you're done. If it's not, if z is not isolated, not all by itself, one side, nothing next to it, we have some work to do. I want you to think right now, maybe maybe uh, pause the video if you have to, or or do it right now as I'm, as I'm kind of stumbling along, giving you time to do this. See what you would do to undo this negative 3 fourths plus z. I want the z. I don't want negative, negative 3 fourths. So in your head right now, here's what should be playing out. It's an equation. I know where my variable's at. I can solve it. I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides and as long as I'm undoing the given operations. I can do whatever I want. Um, the next thing would be, well, what's there? It, what's there that I need to get rid of? Well, I got a negative 3 fourths plus z. How can I do that? I want you to think about it right now. Pause it if you have to and do it. Could you add? Could you subtract? Look at the previous example if you have to. But what I'd like you to be getting out of this is I want to end with z by itself and I need to get rid of this right here. How could you do it? How is it connected? Is it connected with addition, subtraction? Is it connected with multiplication, division? If it's connected with addition or subtraction, you can use addition and subtraction to undo it. Most of the time, it's with addition, you use subtraction. With subtraction, you use addition. Here, if you've already done this, I don't want you to, I'm just doing spoiler alert or whatever. Um, if you haven't tried this on your own, pause it right now and try it, for real. Uh, if you have tried it, the way that we would look at this, there's two ways. If you see this as, I need to subtract, it's connected with the plus, that's fine. But what you're doing, is you're subtracting whatever's here, the whole entire freaking thing, okay? You're subtracting negative 3 fourths. Subtracting a negative is addition. We learned that in pre-algebra. That's um, when you deal with the, the opposite signs and opposites, and we first introduced negatives, uh, we deal with those definitions. That's in pre-algebra. So whenever you're subtracting a negative, you are literally adding. This is really what's going on. You're literally subtracting negative three-fourths from both sides. If you want to show it that way, that is totally fine. Most people are going to shortcut this, though. Most people are going to go, wow, that looks really funky. Um, could I get the same thing if I just added three-fourths? Let me point this out to you. We have done the same thing on both sides right now. Subtracting negative three-fourths is adding three-fourths. It's exactly the same. The big deal here is we've looked to see this is connected by addition. I will be subtracting, but I'll be subtracting a negative that's adding. I know it looks a little weird. It looks a little confusing. This is what's really taking place. We're subtracting a negative or we're adding because they're exactly the same thing. What we're really trying to get is a zero. Why are we trying to get a zero? Answer that question before you go any further, okay? Why are we trying to get zeros here? Because in a little while, next, next kind of video that we're going to do, we're not going to be getting zeros. We're going to be getting ones. If you want to answer that question, if you haven't thought about it, think about it first. The reason why we're trying to get zeros is because when you add a number plus zero or zero to a number, it doesn't change that number. It gives you it back. So we're trying to get zero here so that we end with zero plus z. We want that because we want our z still. We just don't want anything around it. So whether you subtract negative 3 fourths here or add 3 fourths, it's going to be exactly the same thing. 
I prefer adding three-fourths because it's more concise and that means identically what we just did. So we're going to do this, pull out your calculator, do one-half plus three-fourths, or if you, if you forgot how to add fractions, it might be a good time for you to learn that. Your common denominator here would be four, so I'd be multiplying by two over two to get that four. That's two-fourths plus three-fourths. We'd be getting five-fourths. Is it okay to end with a fraction? What do you think? Well, no way. We're going to have to have a fraction. Is it okay to end with an unsimplified fraction? The answer is, listen carefully, no it's not. It's not okay to end with an unsimplified fraction. You have to simplify. So the next question, watch carefully here. Is that simplified? And the answer is, yeah, it is simplified. No, it's not. No, because I'm thinking about one and one fourth. They're the same. This is, let's get this, um, some of the terminology we use gets kind of confused, and, and some people um, use one thing when they mean another. Simplified means that the numerator and denominator have no common factors. It means you can't divide them by anything besides one. That's the same number. I mean, you can't. Four and five don't have any common factors. This is called a mixed number. And that's okay, too. This is simplified. This is a mixed number. This is an improper fraction. This is a mixed number fraction. They're both simplified. They're interchangeable. But when I ask you to simplify, I don't mean this. That's not what I'm talking about. What I mean simplified is that's not simplified. That's improper, but it's not simplified too divides both the numerator and denominator. That's what we'd be simplifying here. This is not simplification, just changing the form. So the big takeaways here, we know what equations are, but we're trying to get this variable by itself. That's your main goal. Do anything you want, as long as you do to both sides. But we're really looking to undo the given operation. So if I give you addition, most of the time you're going to be using subtraction. If you're subtracting a negative, you're actually adding. Um, if we deal with multiplication division, well, we're going to deal with that in the next video. So we won't be adding subtracting more. We'll take a look at that. Uh, do whatever you want, as long as you do both sides. Get the variable by itself. Simplify your fractions for sure. It's okay to end with fractions. And that's pretty much it. Um, at this point, I, I'd really recommend you go through and see if you can do these four examples again without your notes right next to you. If you can, you know that you got it. I'll see you guys for the next video.